All right, it was time. Time to give you guys an update on my collection and let you rate it once again. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Bourbon Hutch, and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So that is right. Today we are doing something we haven't done in a while, which is taking a look at what I've currently got in my collection. One of the first videos I ever did, and one of my most popular videos still to date, was this Rate My Collection Challenge. And since then, I've made quite a bit of progress, gotten a lot of great bottles that I'm pretty proud of, and wanted to give you guys a sense of where I am now in my whiskey collecting journey. And of course, as I go through the video, and once you get to the end, put down in the comments below, once again, your rating for where you think I am in my whiskey collecting journey. Would love for you to do the same. Put down where you think you are in your collecting journey and where you'd like to go next. Before we dive in fully, do just wanna ask that if you're liking the content coming out of the channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button too. Got the goal now to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of 2022. We are over 400 now, which is amazing. And I'm so excited about I want to keep up that trend and get to a thousand so I can do a fun giveaway when we reach that point. First, let's just take a look at some of the bottle kills I've had, the ones I've finished off. There's a lot of staples there that I don't want you guys necessarily getting on me for not having tried because I actually have. And I finished them because I enjoyed them. So let's get into the first bottle here, which was Maker's Mark. This is actually the first bottle of whiskey I ever owned, gift from my uncle, and sort of launched my entire journey. So we'll always hold a special place in my heart. Next, we've got a bottle of 1792 Small Batch, one of the best budget sippers under 30 bucks, if you ask me. Got Larceny Small Batch, so this is um, one of the ones that I went out and bought for myself. Learned what a weeder could taste like, had some chocolate and peanut. Whole new level of um, complexity for me, and I was really excited about it. And we've got two things from Old Forester. We've got the Old Forester 100 Signature and the Old Forester Rye, which is also 100 proof. Both of those are just really, really flavorful, um, exceptional budget whiskeys in that like $20 to $25 range. Next, I had a bottle of uh, Old Grandad 114. Took things up a notch for me in proof, really spicy and bold. Really, really good budget sipper for around 30 bucks. Next, we had a bottle of uh, Four Roses Single Barrel. Absolutely love this bottle, need to replace it soon. This is one I've given as a gift to multiple people. I think the bottle's beautiful and it's just really good quintessential bourbon. Next, we've got two things from Wild Turkey. So we've got the Wild Turkey 81 proof and the Russell's Reserve uh, 10 year. So both of these um, from Wild Turkey, the Wild Turkey 81 is kind of like the 101's younger brother, more delicate, but similar flavors and the Russell's Reserve 10 was sort of my first experience with aged whiskey, good oaky presence and peppery presence to it that uh, sort of expanded my palate. Next, we have Early Times Bottled in Bond. This is one of my favorite budget sippers of all time. You get a liter for around 23 to 25 bucks. Such good rich oak, cherry, vanilla on here, so good. Then I had a bottle of uh, Evan Williams Black Label Pretty much a standard, very cheap budget sipper. I use this a lot in cocktails just as a cheap mixer, but serves that purpose well. And then I had actually one bottle of Irish whiskey, a Jameson, just their typical triple distilled Irish whiskey. Not my favorite overall, which is one of the reasons I haven't explored much of Irish whiskey, but if there's something you think I should be looking at, please let me know in the comments below. And then last but not least, I've got two bottles that I actually picked up today and wanted to share with you guys because I'll probably be doing reviews of them soon. One is the Wild Turkey 101. I've had a bottle of this before, but never got to review it. And man, is this stuff so, so good. So definitely deserves a review. And then next is the winner of my What Should I Buy Next Michter's Edition video. And that was the Michter's Sour Mash. So I'll be doing this, cracking it open and doing a review quite soon. So keep an eye out for that. All right, that finishes off everything that's on the table here. I am going to now do uh, something I don't do very often, which is go handheld and give you a look inside the hutch itself. Just to pause there on the hutch itself, that's where the channel got its name. It's because my grandparents actually passed this piece of furniture down to me. It's from like the 1950s, handmade, and it's beautiful and it houses my bourbon beautifully, and I'm extremely thankful for that. All right, everybody, we've officially gone handheld. 
Just wanted to give you a glimpse inside the left half of the hutch, which I've got most of the glassware in and my infinity bottle in there. All right, let's get in to the actual hutch itself and the full collection. So up here on the top row, first I've got a Sagamore Spirit Rye Double Oak. Not my favorite rye overall, but one that I've shared with some people and they absolutely love it. Plus, the bottle is beautiful and the presentation is just amazing. Then I've got a uh, Knob Creek 12 here that is a 100 proof standard version. That's one of the best bottles, slightly rare, but findable for most people right around 60 to 70 bucks. One of the best aged whiskeys I have. This is the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof. It's a 130.4 proof version. That was sort of one of my first experiences with like super high proof whiskey. And man, I mean, it's not even hard to drink. It's just got such good brown sugar, banana flavors on it. Speaking of brown sugar, both Old Forester 1910 and Old Forester 1920, absolute hitters in that department. These are two of my favorite bourbons. I love Old Forester. It's one of my favorite distilleries. For a while, the uh, 1910 was actually one of my favorite bourbons I ever had, but recently the 1920 has sort of been dethroning it, and I actually like that one even better. Over here, we've got two uh, 1792 products, both the Bottled in Bond and the Full Proof. The Bottled in Bond was actually one of the luckier buys I ever had. I just walked into the store one day and lucked into it. The Full Proof is a, a really good staple, I think, 125 proof, packed full of flavor for right around 60 bucks. But that bottle and bond, I actually think is my favorite 1792 I've had. All right, moving down to the second row, which is some of my more prized possessions. First is this McNamee's Black Irish Bourbon. This is from a very small distillery in the Pocono Mountains of PA. I just went on vacation and we went up to the Pocono Mountains and this is from Holy Ghost Distillery. It's an old farmhouse transferred into a uh, small distillery. This is their high rye bourbon, got really good butterscotch on it. And just happy to have something like super niche and from a small distillery on the shelf. Next are two of my absolute favorite bottles I own. Maker's Mark uh, Limited Wood Finishing Series from 2021. The FAE01 and the FAE02. FAE02, some of the best uh, oaky, creamy, great mouthfeel. FAE01, fruitier and spicier, I think in a lot of ways, really, really good stuff. And I think the Maker's Mark Wood Finishing Series is one of the most underrated sort of limited releases year after year. Then over here, we've got two Larceny Barrel Proof offerings. We've got the C921 and the B522. Both of these are ones that have gotten really good reviews overall, so I'm happy to have them, and both of them are delicious to me. It seems like Larceny Barrel Proof is really hitting its stride recently, so good for them on that. Next to these are the Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs I have, sort of their older brother in a way. Back here is the B521, and then in the front we have the B522 and the C921. So all three of those, 12-year-old, non-chill filtered whiskey, really, really good stuff. If I had to pick favorite right now, I think B522 might be, might be my favorite I've had, and that's the most recent release. All right, let's move down to the bottom shelf, which is admittedly the most crowded by far, as you can tell. So I'm just going to have to navigate this a little bit. But in the back, we've got a wild turkey row. So we've got the wild turkey 101 rye. Uh, Rare Breed, Wild Turkey Long Branch, and Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. So that's the stuff I have, plus the new bottle of 101 from Wild Turkey. One of my favorite distilleries, really consistent, and their prices are staying pretty much um, some of the best in the business. The Russell's Reserve did just get bumped up to like 80 bucks, but I was able to buy this when it was like 60, which is a great buy. Okay, next we sort of have the uh, Buffalo Trace aisle here. So in the very back, just a standard bottle of Buffalo Trace. Then I've got a Sazerac Rye Baby Saz, which I have not opened yet, but we'll be doing a review on soon. Got a bottle of Benchmark Full Proof, which is a really hot, high proof budget sipper. Not my favorite overall, but man, it brings the heat for sure. Then up here, we've got two Weller products, the Weller Special Reserve, and the Weller 107. Really like the 107. It's a classic, great bourbon, um, and happy to have one on my shelves. Okay, in the back here now, we've got some stuff that's not really organized by a distillery. 
We've got a Rittenhouse rye. Back here is a bottle of Maker's Mark 101 from the distillery itself that I actually got to dip in the red wax. So that's got a special uh, place in my heart too. Over here is the Rebel Distiller Collection, 113 proof. Pretty good uh, store pick that I got just from a store right down the street. In the middle here, we've got another one of my favorite budget sippers. That is the Cooper's Craft 100 proof barrel reserve version. Much like the early times, such good flavor on there for uh, a budget sipper. Back here, we've got a High West Double Rye, which isn't my favorite overall, but good to have tasted something from High West and want to explore more from them. Back here, we've also got the Michter's US1 American Whiskey, which um, was the only thing I had from Michter's so far, but now have that sour mash to try, so excited about that. In the very back, we've got the Evan Williams Bottled and Bond and the Heaven Hill Six Year. The Bottled and Bond is one of many people's favorite budget sippers under 20 bucks. Not personally my favorite. I think that six year is really good though. All right, moving up a little bit into this lane. First, we've got a Redwood Empire Lost Monarch. Boo rye, the only boo rye I've had, but man, is it such a really good blend of bourbon and rye. Here we've got a Jim Beam Repeal Batch. Um, solid product overall, sort of a standard Jim Beam, but a little bit harder to find and pretty tasty. Here we've got a Restoration Rye. This was batch two from 2021. Good complexity on that one for sure. And uh, I'm hoping to do a review on that soon. Here in the middle is a Woodford Reserve Double Oak. Just a standard shelfer of that. But man, that was one of the whiskeys that first made me fall in love with how sweet and s'mores-like and chocolatey a bourbon can be. All right, getting back to the very front row. We've got Jack Daniels Triple Mash and Jack Daniels Bonded. Those are two new releases from Jack Daniels, and all I got to say about them is big thumbs up. They did a great job. So then over here, we've got the Bell Mead Reserve and the Nelson Brothers Reserve. Bell Mead has largely been pulled out of the national market or is going to be, and Nelson Brothers from the Greenbrier Distillery is being put out. Bell Mead is really, really great. Um, one of the best bottles around 60 to 65 bucks, but Nelson Brothers really, really good too. And then last but not least in the actual hutch itself, we've got Chattanooga 111 cast strength and a Chattanooga bottled and bond at the spring 2017 release. Of all the craft distilleries out there, Chattanooga whiskey is probably the one I'm most excited about. I love both of these bottles. All right, that covers everything that is in the hutch itself. I think it's a pretty good collection of displayed whiskeys here. I do have one more spot I'm gonna show you. So let's get to that now. All right, we've made it over to where my barrel is displayed here and which just has a mix of things uh, displayed, sort of a variety for people to try when they come over. So first we've got a bottle of Wilderness Trail Small Batch. This is the bourbon they have with rye in it, not a weeded, really, really good. As that's opened up, it's gotten so vanilla and cherry, it's kind of ridiculous. Next, we've got a bottle of Pikesville uh, Straight Rye Whiskey, 110 proof. That's barely a rye, 51% rye, so it's got great bourbon characteristics to it for me and just really, really good. Next, we've got a uh, bottle of Standard Angel's Envy, wine finished, good sweetness on it for sure, and good for bringing anybody over from the wine uh, world who really enjoys wine. Here in the back, we've got a New Riff Single Barrel Pick from a store down the street. Same place that picked that Rebel uh, Distillers Collection. Love this bottle. It's a really good pick and it's got such a strong blackberry note on it, which is great. Back here in this corner, we've got an Evan Williams single barrel from last year. This is now a product that's probably, it's gonna be uh, Kentucky only, which is very sad, but when it used to be 30 bucks and widely available, it was one of the best uh, deals. Now it's around 40 bucks, I've seen it, and still worth it. Um, sad that a lot of people aren't gonna be able to get it though. Here in the middle, we've got a David Nicholson 1843. It's a weeded bourbon. Not my favorite, but a solid sipper for sure. And then over here, we've got two things that actually aren't uh, bourbon. We've got a the Real McCoy single blended rum, aged five years, and it's aged in X bourbon barrels. So it does have a bourbon layer of flavor to it, which is great. And then over here, we've got the Monkey Shoulder Blended Scotch. A little bit too sweet for me. It's sort of like a, got a honeysuckle sweetness on it that isn't my favorite, but a good one to be able to share with people and gotta have something to represent the scotch industry, right? All right, everybody, that's gonna wrap up this look inside my collection today. Like I said in the beginning, rate my collection down in the comments below. You can give me a letter grade from A to F. 
You can give me a number grade. You can just give me a thumbs up. Let me know uh, what, how you think I'm doing. I think for me, I'd probably put myself at like high level intermediate looking to get to advanced level status. But most importantly, I'm having a heck of a lot of fun collecting whiskey and bourbon and expanding my palate. And I hope you guys are too. I hope that whatever bottle you're looking for next, it's a great one and that you find it. And until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking and keep collecting good whiskey. Cheers, everybody.